Hello everybody, today we're going to show you how to do some pole sanding. We're basically going through and doing a pole sanding over our first coat. This is kind of a large remodel here, so we did everything with a joint compound. Got everything coated the day before, everything dried nicely the next day, so here we are, we're going to pole sand everything. This is just basic technique because everybody thinks you just put mud on. Most of my videos I use a hot mud, but these larger projects like this, I just use a regular joint compound so I can get everything coated out and then we turn around and sand it. So this is doing the sanding technique using all purpose joint compound. Basically, we're just going to go through um, using an 80 grit. Some people prefer 80 to 120 grit sandpaper. If the area is real rough, you want an 80 grit, not so rough, then you kick it up. 100 grit, 120 grit. Once you go above 120 grit, say like 150 grit, 220 grit, that's more of a finished sanding. Like a, when they do a perfect smooth wall, they almost go with the 220 grit because it's really fine. The more grittier it is, the more scratches you may leave behind. So that's why you just go through on this pole sanding we're just going to go through it and just lightly sand everything mostly the edges go over everything real lightly i'm not going to just sit there in one spot and just sand away sand away maybe if there's a rough area or something that needs extra sanding i'll put a little extra attention to but we're basically going through everything most important is getting rid of the knife edges on your mud work so it fades in just go over everything if you over sand sheetrock, sometimes you'll fuzz out the sheetrock paper, especially in angles. If you over sand angles, you'll fuzz out the paper tape if you use paper tape and angles. So we're just giving everything a quick swipe. This 80 grit that we're using is real aggressive, so you don't have to go through and really put too much effort into it. You're just kind of going over everything, go over everything, knock out all the goobers, lap marks, knife marks, chatters heavy mudded areas a little more effort around detail details like around light boxes vents anything that looks rough that's the only thing you'll focus on also you will see that on the video the dark rooms will use lights it's always a good idea when you're sanding especially dark rooms use lights when you do like smooth wall drywall they actually have a light you have to keep behind you because you'd be surprised what you see when that light's shining on sometimes it's not the direct light that shows everything it's the shadowing so whenever you're trying to strive for perfect perfection you're going to need to have lights with you halogens or bright leds you just need a light shining at the wall and just kind of move it around until you see all the imperfections in the wall but you use mostly lights just to light up the room first coat just so you kind of see what you're doing you really dial it in when you after you get it all textured especially smooth wall to really sand that way all the imperfections with the added light in the rooms but the basic video here just going through sanding everything we skimmed out an old texture the texture had like a splatter so we went through and basically skimmed all this out this whole room here first coated everything we did just in this one large room here we actually went through 10 boxes of mud in a few hours, so it's quite a lot of mud to throw on the wall and get here. The guy left the heater on, fans on overnight, so everything dried out overnight, which is amazing. There's a lot of patches on the ceiling, stuff like that, so everything just got coated out really good. We're going to go through and get it all pole sanded. It's real tedious, but you kind of want to go over everything, get it all pole sanded. Some people, when they're done pole sanding, they like to de-dust the room, maybe sweep up the floors, get it dust out, let it vent out, because there's a lot of dust, so you definitely want to wear masks. Some people like to wipe down the walls with like a damp sponge, damp rag, or broom them off. That's fine. But we're just basically going to get it ready for a second coat. You're going to have to sand all this before you do a second coat. And then we're going to follow through and do another tight second coat using a joint compound on all the joints, on all the rows and nails, all the patches around the detail, everything that needs a second coat. And then after I get it second coated, I might even go through and lightly sand the areas again because we're kind of doing a smooth Santa Bay type texture in here. 
And then I'm going to go through and going to thin down my mud and I'm going to skim out this whole ceiling area and skim out the walls again. Just doing a real tight skim second coat. That way it's ready for texture. It looks nice right now with the first coat, but there's still imperfections. The first coat's just a really heavy fill. And then the second coat is to make everything kind of perfect. And then if it's still rough after your second coat, then you always have to do a third coat. Most of my work, I can get away with doing a second coat because I do this every day. But most of the do-it-yourselfers, you may need three coats. And sometimes these coats, it's easier to do a lighter coat and then add another coat. Everybody thinks you have to pile on the mud real heavy, but sometimes if you put the mud on too heavy, you may crown joints or have big humps here. So it's easier to always add thinner coats, add an extra coat, tight coat, than it is to build up an area. Once the area is built up, you're going to have to sand it down or you're going to have a hump or a crown on your joints and you don't want that. The basic video, sanding, 80 grit. Once we get this all done, maybe the second coat, I may sand it down with the 150 grit. Just a light sanding, just to knock any imperfections out. And then once I get it all textured out with the smooth texture, most textures you have to sand. I recommend on textures like a 150 grit to 220 grit sandpaper, sand out the texture. And then as you can see with all this mud we put on, all the sanding, all the dust, that's why you want to use a sealer, a drywall sealer before you paint. Because all this sheetrock mud, everything involved here is going to soak up a ton of paint. So you always want to primer your texture before you paint. That's an easy video, just watch and learn. Everybody thinks you pick up a pole sand, but sometimes you got to see it in action to kind of see what's done. It's a lot of work, it's tedious. Some people will sand a couple walls and they'll be done for the day. But with this large room right here remodeled, we have to sand every square inch of it. And I'm just going over everything. I'm not sitting there grinding away all the mud. I'm just going over a quick sand job on first coat. Maybe a second coat, I may sand it a little more effort. And definitely on a finished texture sanding, especially with a smooth wall type texture, you want to put more effort into it, more lighting, so you can see what you're sanding away. I hope this video is helpful. Simple drywall repair channel here. We have a lot of videos, playlists, stuff like this. This is a larger project. We mostly do repairs, but a larger project like this is a job that's literally a couple miles from my house so i'm giving this guy an hourly rate so this guy's making money off me for doing all this work but i'm just grateful to have the work working less than two miles from my house charging the guy an hourly rate because there's a lot to do here it's not just this whole one room we're doing he has a whole other part of the house that he needs sheetrock all that so there's a lot of hours involved with this project I hope you liked the video. We also have plenty of other videos on the channel. So please like, subscribe if you haven't done it already. And leave a comment. Thanks for viewing.